otherwise we have uh, just a mass catastrophe. Yeah, they're very good. Someone said that these systems, artificial intelligence systems at the moment, they're very good at doing things like law- lawyers work. Mm. <laughs> so they're very good at reading contracts and things like that. So it's interesting because it's, it's a revolution. It's not like the industrial revolution where it's manual labor that gets hit necessarily. This is kind of interesting because it hits that kind of intermediate level that usually escapes. Um, so you're right. One of the answers is to tax. There was an a- example was a robot tax. So in a car factory, you say to the manufacturer, well, okay, you can have a robot, but you pay the robot the same as you pay a person. And then that money goes into a funding universal basic income. Mm. So I think yeah, there's got to be an, an economic change because these systems will be there. But all the experts I spoke to agreed that the idea of a Terminator-style general intelligence taking over the world is miles away. And um, so whilst we might start thinking about the regulation, it's not going to happen soon, is the general point, I think. So I would disagree with him. I think, I think that's... I, think I might be one of those people that yeah, it's going to be all right. right. And, then, and then, you know, my iPhone <laughs> takes me out on the way <laughs> to the airport. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. I mean, you, you, it's our choice at the moment, isn't it? I mean, don't don't give your iPhone a laser, right. you know, <laughs> for example. <laughs> and then it doesn't matter right. if it goes crazy and tries to take over the world. I know I know that's a bit facetious because the he would say they could take over power grids and all that kind of stuff, yes. I guess. But. Well, it's these concepts that are really hard to visualize like sort of Kurzweil's idea of the exponential increase of technology leading t- us to a point in the near future where you're going to be able to download your consciousness into a computer. You talk to computer experts, they're like, there's no way, we're miles away from it. Yeah, on neuroscience. Yeah. Neuroscientists yeah. go, you, <laughs> we no way. Yeah. One, new, one brain cell, probably, we, we can't. But Kurzweil's convinced that yeah, what's going to happen problem. is that as technology increases, it can, increases in this wildly exponential way where we really can't visualize it. We can't even imagine how much advancement will take place in those 50 years. Something's going to happen that radically changes our idea of what's possible. And I think Elon shares this idea as well, that it's going to sneak up on us so quickly that when it does go live, it'll be too late. Yeah. I mean, it's worth putting the the, the framework in place. I think the regulatory framework. Even as you said, for the more realistic problem, which is people's jobs are going to get displaced. Yes. And uh, there's a great... Um, I was at a thing and some, someone said, I can't remember who it was, but they said that the job, it was a politician, the, the job of the industry is to create jobs and destroy them. So you've always got to remember that as a mm. government and as regulators. If you're going to allow technologies into the marketplace that destroy people's jobs, it is your responsibility to find a way of replacing those jobs or compensating those people, as you said. Otherwise, you get breakdown, social breakdown. Being a human being, though, is that people need some meaning. Like, they, just giving them income, I think, is just going to be... It's just my speculation. They can create mass despair. Even if you provide them, you provide them food and shelter, they need, people need things to do. So it's, there's going to be some sort of a demand to Copy find meaning for station. people, give yeah. them occupations, give them something, the some carry. task. That's, it seems to be one of the critical Visual parts the enemy. of being a person. So we, we need Check things fire. to do Reloading. that we find meaning in. Yeah. You know, like you were talking about, we're the only things that we know of that have meaning, that find meaning and share meaning and believe in that. Deadline. We're gonna UAV need something like that. If universal basic income comes along, I don't think it's going to be enough to just feed people and house them. Yeah. They're gonna want something to do. If a, you know, a person is a, you're doing something for an occupation, and this is your identity, and then all of a sudden the your occupation becomes irrelevant because a computer does it faster, cheaper, quicker. You, these people are gonna have this incredible feeling of despair and, and, and just not being valuable. Yeah, I mean, uh, what want the utopian? sort of a version of this is that everybody gets to do what we're doing now right. which is make a living sort of thinking and creating and all that kind of you know so that that's the the utopian ideal is you don't need to do the stuff the job that you don't really want to do in the factory right you, you can do the thing that humans are best at but that, that but i agree it's, it's that's a very utopian 
view. Yeah. Does everybody want to do that, or does everybody have the mindset? Well, Maybe it goes great. back to education. Maybe. If everybody had an interest like text. that, if everybody went out to make pottery and painting and doing all these different things that they've always really wanted to do, their needs are met by you know the universal basic income money that they receive every month. But boy, there's a lot of people I don't think have yeah, those desires and needs, and to sort of force them onto them at age 55 or whatever it's going to be. Yeah. It's very, very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big challenge. But I think that, in concept at least, it's inevitable that we do have some sort of an artificial intelligence that resembles us, or that resembles something like Ex Machina. People choose to create that. I mean, choose to create it in our own image. But that's very godlike, isn't it? God created us in our own, his own image. Yeah, and and again, yeah. Is it, I don't know. When I, when I talk to people in the field, as, as you probably have, most of them say, that it's, yeah. it's, it's really, right. it's gonna be miles away. So maybe I'm hiding my head in the sand a bit, but I, I don't think so. I, I think it's, I think we'll know it when, I don't think anyone's going to do it accidentally. So I, I don't think it's just suddenly going to be upon us. I, I, I think we will see, we'll, we'll see ourselves getting, acquiring that capability. We'll see ourselves we'll, getting close. We'll, we'll see those systems beginning to emerge and then we'll think about it. I think. 200 years ago, if you wanted a photograph of something, you want a picture of something, you had to draw it. I mean, there was no just think of that. It's almost inconceivable. No automobile, no photography. Yeah. What was automobile? Well, maybe there was some sort of machines that drove people around, right? Something close. There was well, trains years earlier than that. Right? You, you go back 500 years, you have almost nothing. Yeah. It's crazy. Oh, we've been quick. <laughs> it's so fast. It's so yeah. fast. I mean, and then this, what we're doing right now, there's people right now in their car that are streaming this. So they're in their car and they're listening as they're driving on the road. Maybe they have a Tesla. Maybe they have an electric car. They're driving down the road, streaming two people talking, where it's ones and zeros and it's broken down and there's some audible form and you can listen to it in your car. That is bananas. Yeah. I agree. We've been quick. So quick. Well, think of the world, you know, the internet. I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, not long. I mean, I remember it being invented. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Oh, well, certainly the web. When so, did so you the web. on? So, so the web, well, it was very early for me because I was in doing particle physics and I thought that the web comes from CERN, the WWW bit. Right. So it's certainly in the early 90s I was involved in that, um, you know, in, in the university, with email and all that kind of stuff. So I don't, I don't know when. It kind of didn't really, you, you, could, you could have a web browser that just, the only sites that were What's there were NASA. And uh, I think NASA had one of the early sites and CERN. And there's very little else. When did you we become involved with CERN? So that would be, I started doing particles. Yeah, and and when, was, when did the Large Hadron Collider go? That was, um, I remember, it was 2000, um, 2003. 2003. So on. I can't remember, it was about 10 years ago. But it started up, it started up, and then we had a problem with it. And it took it for a while. I haven't been taking data that long. But it's a tremendously successful thing now. And it's, it's operating beyond its design capabilities. It's quite incredible. It's so stunning. It's so it's cool. Cool. I mean, how large is it? How large, how large is it? It's, um, it's 27 kilometers, so it's about 16 miles. 16 miles, and it's a circular yeah. sort of a building. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a big tube. I mean, you think basically it's mo mainly under France and partly under Switzerland. And it accelerates protons around in a circle, uh, both ways. Oh, my God, my little set. It goes around 11,000 times a second. So that's a very close to the speed of light. 99.9999999. And then we cross the beams and the paper pass. And in those collisions, we will recreate the conditions that will occur in less than a billion of a second of the Big Bang. So we, we know that physics. So going back to what you said about the carbon and the oxygen, we can trace that story back way beyond the time when there were protons and neutrons to when there were quarks and gluons around and, and go all the way back and the Higgs boson doing its thing back then. And we, so we can see 
all that physics in the lab. So that's why we have some, a lot of confidence in that story. It's so fascinating that they were able to talk someone into funding that. That they got a bunch of people together and that you, you were able to explain to, you know, politicians and, and you know, regular people what, what you're trying to do. It's a great example of how you get something done. So it was the, night, it, the 50s when CERN was established. I think it was 53 or 54. I can't quite remember. It's some time. And um, it was Why built out it? from the second world. So, so you had Europe at the end of the war. And it was realised that the, the only way forward for Europe was collaboration, to rebuild the scientific base and in, for peace, for peaceful peace. And so CERN was set up as an international collaboration in Europe initially with that political idea that it would, it would explore nature uh, Reloading. just for, for freely and for, for, peace, for peaceful means. But that's a culture, you see. And, and so that was a... It, the, poli the politics was right. So it was set up by international treaty so that the member states are bound to... Oh, no, the and they pay a small amount, relatively small amount, mm -hmm. to CERN every okay. year, which is a percentage of their GDP. And that's the money they use to build, do the experiments and build the accelerators. So it's very hard to get out of it. And you wouldn't really want to because it's a small amount of money per company. And CERN does not extra money to build things. It just takes its money and basically saves up and plans itself. But because it's got a regular stream of money, it can do it. So it can say, we're going to build this machine and it will take eight years because that's how much money we've got. And we'll build it in eight years and we know how much money we've got so we can do it. And it's a lesson. I mean, the, the reason that the US Collider, the SSC, failed 